right, in this video we're going to be uh, demonstrating how to uh, read in circuit the uh, EEPROM from a Saab 9395 uh, SIM module. Um, it's from year 2004 and a half to 2009. And you can recognize the module becomes, because it uh, is a pod, which is around the steering column. All right, now in the past videos that we've done, we've done clone outs, okay? Where, just a quick review, a clone out is where you read the data out of the, uh, the double EEPROM. Um, some people have asked me why, why I call it a double EEPROM. It's an EE, -E, so there's two E's at the front of PROM, so that's why it's called a double EEPROM, or why I refer to it as a double EEPROM. Um, so, uh, in other, our other, uh, some of our other videos, we did a, a clone out. And the clone out is where you read the data out of the double EEPROM and you pass it off to your transponder programmer and your transponder programmer makes a key. All right, well, this, for this module, it's not a clone out. It's what's referred to as a conversion. And a conversion is where you read the data from the double EEPROM you use your transponder programmer to process the file. The transponder programmer adds a key to the file. And after it adds a key to the file, it makes you a new file with that new key added. And then you program that file back into the double EEPROM, which is in the module. Okay, so that's what we're going to do today. Although I don't have a transponder programmer that I'm going to use, I'm going to use a file that I already created um, called new file just to uh, show you how the procedure would work. So we're going to go ahead and uh, just read the data out of the, uh, the double EEPROM in this module. And as before in, in our other videos, I'm going to use uh, one of the features of our product, which is in our, our library and called AR Setup Files. Okay, this allows you to uh, get information about the module so that you don't have to perhaps look up a bunch of stuff and uh, not know what you're doing. So let's switch over to uh, the computer and we'll start the software and proceed. All right, here we are at the uh, computer screen. And um, as before, I'm going to double click the EEPROM Plus icon, start our software, and uh, select the component for this particular part. This particular part in this module is a 93LC 66-8-bit or 93LC66A. Uh, but once again, I'm gonna let the, uh, the setup file make that choice for us. So I'm gonna type 93C66 which is not the correct part number for this, but we'll proceed and you can see again how the air setup file uh, will correct that. All right, we're gonna go to path. We're gonna go to locksmith, which is right here. We're gonna press enter. We're gonna go to the librarian and we're gonna look for sob, okay? So here we are in air setup, file, air setup one and if you look, uh, we'll go down into the, the lower pane, press enter. We have Acura, we have Audi, and BMW Chrysler all the way to Honda. There is no Saab. Okay, so Saab is not in this file. So we'll exit back to browse. Let's check Air Setup 2. And you'll see Zuzu, Jaguar, Mazda, Mercedes, Nissan, and Saab. Okay, so we Saab is in this particular Air Setup file. So we'll uh, go back to the uh, lower pane. And we're going to go down until we find Saab. So we'll just scroll down. Here are all the different vehicles that are in this uh, Porsche and Saab. Here is Saab. Okay, and before, in our previous demo, uh, we locate the line which has the uh, asterisk on it. And if you look up at the, the two lines above, Saab 93, 2004 and a half to 2009, Saab 95, 2004 and a half to 2009. All right, so here we are on the line uh, with the uh, adapter ASRSM1A. The voltage position is uh, LV3.6. The plug position is left on the 93XX set of headers. Switch number four, tip switch four is down, 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 down. And there's the part number, which is 93LC66A. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and press the F6 key and it's going to choose that correct part number for us. And then we'll go back and set up the programmer so we can read the part. We're going to press F6. It says device type updated. And at this point, we are done in the library. And we have uh, selected our part. And now we can proceed back to the command list. And let's get the uh, 
the programmer setup to read the part. All right, here's the programmer. It's already powered on. Obviously, it's powered on because we started the software. And we're going to uh, confirm that the adapter is set correctly. Okay, the switch is set to LV and the range switch is set to 3.6, so that's correct. And our four position dip switch is uh, supposed to be all down. We have four up, so we'll set that down. And I'm going to use the AccuTouch probe because the AccuTouch probe is easier to use than the clip. Uh, but the clip would work just fine for this if you uh, don't want it to use the clip. So we're going to put the AccuTouch probe over the uh, far left hand set of headers, which is right here where it says 93XX. Brown wires on the right, as always. And here's the AccuTouch probe with its red mark indicating pin 1. Alright, so let's go ahead and uh, bring the sim back and we'll set it up. and we'll put the probe over the top of the part and see if we can't get a good read. Okay, the sim is back and I've zoomed in enough. Uh, I believe you can see the part. If you uh, can't, it's right here. This is the 93LC66A. It's got a little dimple on it so you can uh, determine which pin is pin 1. And I'm going to take the AccuTouch probe and I'm going to position it over the top of the part. And we'll see if we cannot get a good read. There it is over the top of the part and I am Pushing down. So let me switch back to the uh, computer. And we're going to go to the buffer editor, which is Command 5. So now we're going to push Command 5. Let's see, we are in Command 5. We're going to push G and see if we can't get a good read. All right, there is the data uh, from the, uh, the double E prompt in the sim module. Notice we read it in circuit and didn't have any problem with it. And if you look down in the lower right hand corner, it says part and buffer match. Data indicates valid. So that's what we need to do. We're now ready to uh, save our file. And um, in this scenario, we're going to uh, then uh, allow the transponder programmer to uh, make us a new file and then we'll program that back. So let's go ahead and do that. Clear this. and. I created a, uh, a new directory called conversion where we're going to save this file and let me go there next to this we're going to press path we may already be there since I did this and we're in locks so yeah we're pointing to locksmith okay so here is conversion we're just going to go over here to conversion I'm going to press uh, enter just in case you didn't know okay when you move around in the upper pane of the uh, path command, um, the uh, new path is going to be shown here. Okay, if you clone out, there's been files, there's an airbag if you were doing airbags. But there's conversion, all right? That's where the new new drive path, that's where it'll be. If you look down here, current path is locksmith. Okay, if I press enter, it's going gonna, it's gonna to log into conversion and it's going to uh, leave the path command. If I press insert, you can see the current path will change to conversion. All right, you don't have to press insert unless you want to see a change, but if you just hit enter, it would have uh, selected conversion. All right, so I'm going to press enter. We're now back at the main command list. I'm going to save this from the main command list so you can see it. Uh, that is up here. If you look, command A, which is save buffer to disk file. I'm going to press A. Enter file name. Let's just call this sub uh, 93.bin. Save defined buffer range. What that means is the size of the part, which is up here, is 0 to 1 FF. So we in the buffer, we only have to save 0 to 1 FF. So the defined buffer range is 0 to 1 FF. So save divine buffer range, that's what we're going to do. So we're going to press yes, file save complete, and let's just check to see if it's there. So we're going to go directory of files, which is here, directory of files, D, and there it is, sob93.bin. Okay, so now we're going to, we would now uh, use our transponder programmer, we would um, access the conversion directory, we would read it in, we would process it, and our transponder programmer 
would make us a new file, which we have cleverly named newfile.bin. Okay, well now, and then we, after the file was created, we would um, drop it into the conversion folder or directory, and then we're going to access it with the, uh, the, the software and program it back into the part. Okay, well, how do we do that? Well, let's see, in this case, you move around as before, we're in the directory command. So there's new file, it's been highlighted, and if you look down here, we give you these hints that explain to you what to do. All right, file name, F3 to program, or F4 to load. F4 to load would lay it loaded into the buffer if you wanted to work on it or look at it. F3 to program will also load it into the buffer and then vector to the program device from disk file function. So I'm gonna go ahead and press F3 on the uh, computer and it says number of devices required, one, insert first device one, starting address zero, and then over here it's prompting us for program or skip and you'll notice that it's, it's in the program device from disk file procedure. So all we have to do is program. So I'm going to put the part, or the uh, AccuTouch Pro, Pro back over the top of the part, and we're going to program it. Okay, the AccuTouch probe back over the top of the part. So we'll switch back to the uh, computer and we'll say program. And the new file has now been programmed into the, uh, the SIM module. Okay, so Let's just go back and confirm that that happened. So we'll exit the uh, programming uh, procedure since we don't want to program another one. Uh, something I'll point out to you, this, our software will say set, program another set, because uh, this system, our system can also be used to program uh, other, other products, such as video games, industrial controls, things like that, where there were multiple sets of EEPROM. So we use the term set to describe uh, more than one device, so that's why it says set. All right, so let's go back to um, the buffer editor, command five. There's the new file that uh, we just programmed into the part, so let's confirm that it's there. So let's press C twice to clear the buffer, and we'll press G, and there's new file, which is now in the SOB, in the SIM. All right, I'll tell you what, let's put the old file back. So in this case, uh, before we put the old file back, again, you're done with this. You're ready to uh, put it back in the car and, uh, and you know, get the keys and make the key and uh, you've made the key and, and your, your job is complete. But I'm gonna program the, uh, the original file back so we don't have new file left in here. So we're gonna go to directory, we're gonna go to sob.bin, we're gonna press F3 to program, we're gonna press P to program and Going to program that old file back in to the part. Let's go to Command 5. Let's clear the data and press G. And there's the old file, which has been replaced. You can see how easy it is to use our system to move this data around. And we didn't unsolder this part, it was done in circuit. So I just want to make that clear as well. One more thing before we wrap up this video if you have a SOB where you have corrupted the data and you have a Tech 2 with a SOB card, there is a virgin file for a SOB SIM in our software. So if you go to the librarian, oh, there is another library entry in Locksmith. I'm pointing to the wrong place. Path. Lib locksmith. Enter librarian. Here, if you look, it says Sob sim, right here. And this is a virgin file of which you can program into um, a sim that has been corrupted. And then all you, you can add keys with your Tech 2 with SIM card. Just pointing this out to you so that you know that it's available. Okay, so uh, that, as they say, is that. That wraps up this demonstration. Again, uh, we appreciate uh, you watching. And um, if you would uh, 
like, if you have liked this content, um, please press the like button because uh, that allows uh, YouTube to uh, promote our, our videos uh, and content to other people. Again, if you would uh, like information about our products um, or anything else, you can contact us by phone or email. And that information is on our website uh, at arlabs.com. So once again, we uh, appreciate uh, your interest, and uh, we uh, thank you for watching.